India's Balance of Payment Balance of payment refers to all economic transactions between domestic and foreign residents over a stipulated period. The balance of payment of a country provides an overall view of its international economic position. It is very much helpful for the policy makers and the business communities. In this lesson, you will learn the concept of the balance of payment accounting procedure, trends in India's balance of payment, and recent policy measures. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to explain concept of balance of payment, describe salient features of balance of payment, describe recent policy measures. Balance of payments refers to all economic transactions between domestic and foreign residents over a stipulated period, generally one year. The analysis of balance of payment is immensely useful for the policy makers and business communities. Balance of trade refers to the difference between physical imports and exports, that is, visible items only for a period, say a year. Visible items are those which are physically exported and imported like merchandise, gold, silver and other commodities. During a given period of time, exports and imports may be exactly equal, in which case the balance of trade is said to be balanced. In balance of payments accounting, the balance of payments should be zero because every transaction is two-sided with debits balancing credits. But in practice, the balance of payments will not always be equal to zero. This can be due to, among other things, a country's central bank engaging in transactions that are not counted towards the country's balance of payments, or the lack of available statistical data to record all transactions. Balance of payments is classified as Balance of payment on current account. Balance of payment on capital account. The balance of payment on current account records the current position of the country in the transfer of goods, services and merchandise as well as invisible items, donations, unilateral transfers, etc. Balance of payments on capital account shows the country's financial position in the international scenario, the extent of accumulated foreign exchange reserves, foreign assets and liabilities, and the impact of current transactions on international financial positions. The recovery in GDP growth for 2009-2010, as indicated in the advance estimates, is broad-based. Seven out of eight sectors or subsectors show a growth rate of 6.5% or higher. The exception, as anticipated, is agriculture and allied sectors, where the growth rate is estimated to be minus 0.2% over 2008 and 9. Sectors including mining and quarrying, manufacturing and electricity, gas and water supply have significantly improved their growth rates at over 8% in comparison with 2008-09. The construction sector and trade, hotels, transport and communication have also improved their growth rates over the preceding year, though to a lesser extent. However, the growth rate of community, social and personal services have declined significantly, though it continues to be around its pre-global crisis medium-term trend growth rate. Financing, insurance, real estate and business services have retained their growth momentum at around 10% in 2009-2010. As per the revised quarterly GDP data on the new series of NAS, it now turns out that the GDP growth rate for quarter 3 2008-09 was 6.2% as against 
5.8% on the old series. The growth rates in per capita income and consumption, which are gross measures of welfare in general, have declined in the last two years. This is a reflection of the slowdown in the overall GDP growth. The salient features of India's balance of payments are India has always faced trade deficits except in 1972-73 and 1976-77 where there was a small surplus. Trade deficit has been rising from plan to plan with the exception of the fourth plan when the trade deficit declined. The rate of growth of exports has been fluctuating from plan to plan. Net invisible receipts have been positive. The crisis in the balance of payments during 1990-91 and in the first quarter of 1991-92 necessitated the mobilization of additional external funds to fill the gap. The task of the government became particularly difficult in the context of the dwindling international faith in our economy. In the end, the government could mobilize substantial additional financial resources from the IMF, the World Bank and the bilateral donors, especially Japan. Fiscal deficit not only affects the prospects for growth and stability, but has a vital bearing on the balance of payment strategy. A strategy for ensuring a viable balance of payments requires correction in fiscal imbalance as well. There has been a low level of utilization of external assistance resulting in a substantial part of authorized loan being in the pipeline. The main factor for underutilization of assistance due to the time lag between commitments and conclusions of specific credit arrangements, time consuming procedures and domestic budgetary constraints in providing counterpart funds. The emergence of a number of independent states out of the erstwhile USSR are bound to affect the country's export adversely. Thus, India's balance of payments continued to be under strain. The underlying weakness of the balance of payments remained. The following support from net invisible receipts resulting from interest payments, the poor industrial and export performance and high rate of inflation stood in the way of achieving a sustainable balance of payments. Most developing countries like current account deficits CAD in their balance of payments and attract external resources to supplement their domestic saving for achieving higher growth rates. Such financing through CAD mirrors the accretion to a country's external liabilities which have to be serviced. This raises the issue of the viability of the CAD. In the Indian context, large and persistent CADs were run throughout the 1980s, peaking at an unsustainable level of 3.2%, 1990-91, and reflected in an explosion of external indebtedness. Drawing lessons from the crisis of 1990-92, the High Level Committee on Balance of Payments recommended that the CAD should be contained at 1.6% of GDP, which was financiable with normal capital flows. Structural reforms launched in the wake of the 1991 crisis have addressed this issue on two fronts. First, there has been a deliberate policy shift towards encouraging non-debt creating flows to finance the CAD. Secondly, the current receipts have shown a robust performance since 1990-91, largely as a result of the reform process. In the capital account, there has been a significant compositional shift away from the debt flows to non-debt flows. The compositional change has mirrored the effect of conscious policy initiatives spread over trade, exchange rate, foreign investment, and industrial policy regimes and an endorsement of international confidence in the Indian economy. The economic reforms have created the enabling conditions 
for inflow of foreign investment, both direct FDI and portfolio PPI, which were practically non-existent earlier. The distinct strengthening of the balance of payments since 1991-92 has resulted in a healthy build-tip of foreign exchange reserves. In the exchange of goods and services between countries, there are always visible and invisible exports and imports. Visible items are those which are physically exported and imported, like merchandise, gold, silver and other commodities. The invisible items comprise costs of services, income and transfer payments. The IMF manual classifies invisible account data only under eight heads. They are travel, transportation, insurance, investment income, government included elsewhere, miscellaneous like receipts or payments for patents and royalties, transfer payment officials, and lastly, transfer payments private. A surge in the surplus on the invisibles account was led by burgeoning private transfers, partly reflecting the conversion of Indian Development Bonds, IDBs, and a noteworthy improvement in software and other technology-related exports. The increase in gross invisible receipts more than offset the increase in net investment income payments. The package of reforms unfolded many policy measures, with flexible exchange rate regime being adopted since the early 70s, the guiding principle for monetary authorities has been to allow the exchange rate to move in alignment with macroeconomic fundamentals, although countries prefer to limit exchange rate movements within thresholds, which affects the fundamentals. If the objective is to prevent real appreciation of the exchange rate and preserve external competitiveness, there could be four options or a combination thereof to choose from. They are The central bank could intervene in the foreign exchange market and then sterilize the incremental liquidity thus generated, thereby keeping the monetary expansion under check. Trade restrictions could be relaxed so as to enable capital flows generally supplement domestic saving and as such have the potential to foster economic growth. The authorities could relax restrictions on capital outflows. The authorities could reintroduce restrictions to moderate the pace of inflows such as increasing reserve requirements on non-resident deposits tightening of norms for entities, accessing international markets for private capital, higher withholding taxes on interest payments abroad, tightening prudential standards on external borrowing and introducing end-use clauses. However, it needs to be recognized that an open capital account would not only limit the authority's independence in the conduct of exchange rate policy, but also expose the economy to international shocks. Any strategy of targeting an exchange rate or the money stock may be offset by unexpected inflows which affect the nominal exchange rate as well. India adopted Current Account Convertibility CAC in August 1994. Furthermore, CAC is already instituted for foreign investors both direct and portfolio, non-resident depositors and resident corporates contracting external commercial borrowings ECB. Controls, however, continue to operate on the ability of resident individuals and corporates to send abroad as also on inflows and outflows of capital associated with banks and non-bank financial entities. A review of the international experience with CAC shows that, in general, liberalization of the capital account induces large capital inflows, which can cause real appreciation in the exchange rate and erode the effectiveness of domestic monetary policy. 
Further, an open capital account imposes tremendous pressure on the financial system and brings wetness in the financial system into sharper focus. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The difference between the value of commodity exports and imports is known as balance of trade. Right or wrong? Wrong. Those items which are physically exported and imported are called invisible items. Right or wrong? Right. Balance of payment is broader than the balance of trade. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Balance of payment refers to all economic transactions between domestic and foreign residents over a stipulated period. The balance of trade refers to the difference between physical imports and exports, that is, visible items only for a period, say a year. Balance of payments is broader than the balance of trade for it includes not only visible items but also invisible items. It is classified as balance of payments on current account and balance of payments on capital account. The balance of payments on current account record the current position of the country in the transfer of goods, services and merchandise as well as invisible items, donations, unilateral transfers, etc. Balance of payments on capital account shows the country's financial position in the international scenario, the extent of accumulated foreign exchange reserves, foreign assets and liabilities and the impact of current transactions on international financial position. The changes in foreign exchange reserves arising out of current account transactions are included in the capital account in order to find out the exact foreign exchange reserve. The government established a more liberalized policy in the year 1991 and measures were aimed at integrating industry, trade and exchange rate policies to enhance the efficiency in the economy. The beneficial effect of the 1991 reforms and the subsequent measures are reflected in export and invisible growth. An unviable current account can place an external constraint on growth.